Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and over the course of the next few videos I'm going to give you a complete rundown of every single new feature within Ableton Live 10. This first video is going to give you a quick overview of all of the new features in Ableton Live 10, ranging from the interface and the file handling right the way through to the changes within the workflow and how we can go about navigating through Live. We'll then have a look at the new browser features such as the collections and colours feature so we can now go in and essentially label all of our different samples and plugins and anything we want using the colour system. And then finally we'll have a look at a few new additions to the browser, especially things such as Max for Live and then we can also have a look at how we can install packs from within the browser as well. We're also going to be taking a look at the new instruments and audio devices within Live such as the brand new Wavetable synthesizer, which is capable of a whole host of different types of sounds, from basses right the way through to ambient soundscapes and bright EDM leads. We're then gonna have a look at the brand new Echo Audio device, and we're gonna see how we can dive into its parameters and modulation settings, and we can emulate a whole different host of delays and Echo hardware units. Next, we're gonna have a look at the drum bus, and this is another brand new audio effect, and this is an analog style drum processor and this is going to allow us to process our drums as a drum bus, as a collective, just like we would with a load of different effects using a rack. However, it's now bundled into a nice tidy plugin and from this plugin we're going to be able to process and do a range of different things such as distortion, compression, low frequency enhancement, transient processing and then we can also change the high frequency response as well so it gives us a lot of power and a lot of processing just from a single device. Next we have the pedal audio device and we can sort of think of this as being a bit similar to overdrive but this is emulating different guitar pedals and we've got three different modes and then each one of these different modes we can dive in and then we can change that up even more to change the sonic characteristics of that particular pedal so we can use this to get a nice bit of fuzz or we could just use it for a gentle bit of overdrive or we can absolutely obliterate a signal we we'll also have a look at a few other changes to other devices in live such as EQ8 and the utility device. We'll then have a look at some long awaited features such as being able to group groups and multi-clip MIDI editing. We'll then explore how we can use the capture function to get our ideas down really quickly without having to break that really important flow. So there's no need to stop what we're doing and having to hit record because as long as it's MIDI, we're going to be able to capture it straight away using this new capture feature. So that's really powerful. We'll then have a look at what I think is the biggest and best change for Ableton Live 10 after the new devices and that is the arrangement view editing. So we'll be looking at what we can do within the arrangement view now in terms of warping and stretching clips as well as how we now move things around, how we can add fades straight from the arrangement and as well as that some more advanced editing and navigation features. We'll then have a look at automation and how we can access the brand new automation mode using the A shortcut and we're going to have a look at how we can select and edit the automation, how we can move around our breakpoints and also go through the different shortcuts and ways of editing when we're in automation mode. We'll then check out some of the new mixing features such as the ability to split the pan so we can now pan in stereo separately left and right and as well as that we'll also have a look at some of the drum rack routing options. And finally we'll have a look at Max for Live because this is now bundled with Ableton Live so it no longer requires a installation. It's had a bit of an overhaul, there's some new devices and there's some overhaul devices as well so we've got all the drum synths and a few others and they're now using a lot less CPU, they're looking nicer and they're sounding nicer as well so we'll have a good look at Max for Live. So that is a very brief rundown of all of the new features in Ableton Live 10 which we're going to be going into in much more detail over the course of the next few videos. So if you've already got Ableton Live and you're thinking of upgrading to Ableton Live 10 or if you just want to see what's going on with all the new features in Ableton Live then stay tuned and I'm going to go through all of these features and get you up to speed with Ableton Live 10 so you can get back to what's important which is making music. Thanks very much and I look forward to seeing you in the first video.